it's imperative from government uh, to to support you know the development of the tech ecosystem solely because when we look at the global trends, global economies, the general trajectory of any economy is from firstly being primary sector driven, i.e. you know mineral beneficiation, so mining activities, manufacturing, all those downstream activities, agriculture, and when we look at agriculture, looking at not agro-processing, but the actual farming practice, those are the early stages of any growing economy that, you know, they are built on these industries. As the economy grows, those industries modify a bit and they become the secondary industries. And these industries then start requiring more skills-intensive uh, individuals. We're looking at now, you know, process manufacturing, we're looking at agri-processing and any other form of large-scale industrialization activities. But then as the, the, the economy grows furthermore, uh, we're seeing the emergence of the tertiary sector and the tertiary sector driving in, you know, the services sector mostly. We're looking at now complicated, uh, not necessarily complicated, but the more uh, nuanced services that drive the economy. Just looking at banking, insurance, retail, leisure and tourism. Uh, and if you look at, you know, going all philosophical, the nice little hierarchy of needs, the basic, we all need to eat, right? But the self-actualization spend at the top of the pyramid and the tertiary sector now is doing exactly that. It's taking that nice little hierarchy of need and shifting it a bit because saying that now our self-actualization requirements as a society, as a community are much more now important. Now we are all having mobile devices that, you know, we can tap our phones and pay. We're calling Ubers. We're doing all sorts of things very, very much digitally. And that's because it's services driven. And as we look at how, how the economy uh, develops and it becomes more complex, it's then we're seeing that, you know, um, global economy starts adopting technologies and they start integrating the use of those technologies in their processes and starts using technology as uh, economic driver because of firstly two things, it's full of the impact, i.e. how can it support other sectors, how can it support job creation, how can it support other businesses and it's multiplier impact, what else can come from it? And, you know, we're seeing how many companies will have spin-offs, et cetera. But ultimately, the multiplier impact now creates a downstream avenue for new businesses to emerge. Let's look at, for example, the banking industry, how if we break it down, suddenly we need payment integrators between shop fronts <laughs> on an e-commerce marketplace. So for, with that landscape set, you know, the economy is industrializing very rapidly, globally, the global economy as well. For South Africa and the Western Cape, it's so important that we start realizing this because then we can really start prioritizing and taking advantage of what digitization can have for the economy. This in terms of job creation, accessing new products, accessing new intellectual property, you know, the opportunity, which is highly unspoken of, but of exporting technology services to the global market. So it's, it's, it's very important that we really, really consider what that, you know, how can we as South Africa take advantage of it? And the second thing is because of our young population. And again, you know, we, we can talk about all the gloomy stuff about our unemployment rate, particularly within the youth. This is an opportunity again for us to actually tap into that potential. If we look at the European population, 50% of it is over the age of 60, <laughs> with average age in South Africa is between 18 and 30. So now we've seen that South Africa's young population is now likely to service a very old economy in European markets, whereas we can tap into our economy, digitize it, upskill and reskill it, and make it more productive for the economy from creating not just jobs, but creating new jobs, creating jobs for the future, and allowing our youth and young people to become also globally competitive as a labor force. Uh, globally competitive in the sense of skills, globally competitive in the sense of entrepreneurship, and the, in a, in the capacity to innovate. So there is a lot of opportunity that we can tap into, uh, that we need to tap into. It's imperative that we do, uh, because the rate of digitization globally is, you know, growing very, very fast. Moore's law is something that we're seeing on a daily basis. The amount of data we consume and generate is just requir it requires us to have more and more processor speed. But processor speed becomes more and more complex as they become more and more smaller, advanced, and so forth. In all of this, you know, we're seeing that the need for digital adoption by state, uh, by government, and supporting digital economy, I feel like we should set a similar target as we did for the SDGs. We're net, uh, net zero carbon neutral by 2030. We should set similar ambitions when it comes to digitization because 
truthfully speaking, we are we are going to set ourselves at a disadvantage. We're going to see the same dynamics that you know govern international trade, where developing countries and the global south are either going to be taken advantage of and exploited, or alternatively they can lead the four because they have the capacity, the skills, the labor force, and the opportunity to scale into those international markets. The saying, you know, necessity is the mother of innovation. We've got so many challenges and we're seeing how in innovation entrepreneurship is actually stepping to the fore to address those challenges. Before we had Apple Pay, we had M-Pesa. So today, Apple Pay is big because of the backbone infrastructure that M-Pesa said that you know, payments can be done through a mobile wallet large industries are being shook to the core from insurance, education. Clearly, the pandemic showed us that there's no need for four walls to learn. Of course, learning happens in communities, but now those communities are digitizing as well. Those communities are developing a whole new set of norms and practices. They're setting up a whole new set of values. So now the, the, the conversation really is a lot about how can we grow the economy. The question is, how can we advance, step up to support digitization and innovation, leverage our existing resources, and then make sure that we've got that pipeline and that funnel of entrepreneurship and innovation where we can see new business models come out and actually be the leaders in this, in, in digitization. Of course, we can talk about the global dynamic. You know, people talk about leapfrogging, but then again, you know, it's the, how do we quickly divest and invest in new technology when we're both struggling to put kids through school? But that's now the conversation that we need to start having with the global community as to how do we finance all of this, how do we create an enabling environment where we can simultaneously divest and simultaneously invest in capacity to scale this entrepreneurship, scale innovation? The lowest hanging fruit at the moment for our state and our government is primarily in education. And then once we can get that right, the 5G connectivity and sooner or later, quicker than we know, will be at 7G. I don't know if it will be called 7G, but whatever it is then, it will be the driving force of connectivity. And for example, data centers are becoming more and more necessary in markets, you know, no more the need for a data center in European markets and in American markets. We need data centers on the African soil, physically on the African soil, because of the amount of data we're generating, the amount of data we're consuming as well. So there is a whole for that infrastructure can only come and we can only take full advantage of it. If I think we start at the grassroots level in terms of education, on digitization, on innovation, entrepreneurship, and the various aspects and value chains uh, and life cycles of technology.